Stay tuned to Love World TV. Hello and welcome to another episode of Moments with Maxine. Now, to, <laughs> I always say this and I know I do, but you genuinely will not imagine what we have on this program today. Today we are looking closely at words, different languages, uh, meanings and, and, and many other things, but you'll, get, you'll grasp what I'm trying to say. I mean, I can't even break it down right now myself to explain it to you, but we have an amazing man called Jammers and he is going to be able to break down the meaning and, the, and go deeper and have a deeper understanding of the English language, which we will share with you very shortly. So do not go away because trust me, you don't want to miss this episode. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Moments with Maxine. And if you wasn't watching earlier, as I explained, we are going to be looking at words and the, 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 the English language and getting a deeper understanding to what we are being taught just in everyday life through schools, through just everyday communication. But you'll see what I mean. Anyway, let me introduce you to an amazing man called Jammers. Nice to meet you as well. Really Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. I mean, Jammers is um, somebody who is unique in his own individual right, um, but at the same time, we know that he has an amazing gift and we are going to understand exactly what that is. Well, Jamis, first of all, as we said earlier, thanks for coming down. No problem. Or should I say thank you for coming on the program? <laughs> yeah. Because that word down, I need to be careful how I say yeah, that. The word down is the word own, you see. So okay. when you're putting something down, you're putting your ownership on it. It's inside the word. Okay. There you go. This is just the start of it. But I mean, Jamis, I mean, firstly, um, you know, just for people watching, how did you actually get to this place where you felt that words um, um, had a, 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 a deeper meaning and something that you wanted to pursue and go into. I mean, where, where did all of this come from? Where, where, did, where did the very start come from? Well, I've always been good at words, so I've been told that I could read when I was two. Wow. And then uh, my, my parents had to spell like P-A-R-K to stop me from finding out things. But then I knew the spelling of it. So I, I could work out how, yeah. Before I even go any further, I mean, before you even go any yeah. further, we do this every day to our children when we don't want them to do or know something that will right. say, um, yeah, the S-W-E-E-T's are in there or you're going to go to S, yeah. well, I know I do it as well. Now, you're telling me that as, as innocent as that is, that this was something that was major to you where you started gathering words from as young well, as I think that. that was, it was even for my, I noticed my, my niece that she, they took her to France for holiday. Next year, she comes back speaking French, you know. So as as children, they've got the capacity to pick up sure. things like uh, languages and sounds and what people are doing when they can't even communicate through the language, you know. Okay. So they can pick up the vibration. So anyway, yeah. But okay, you're talking about through body language, through facial expressions, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, read. They can read. See, read is not just reading the words; it's reading the, the sounds. And when you don't speak the language, you're more aware in what you're, in, in the expressions okay. and interpreting the feelings. So, but when I went to school, it's like I, I lost that ability to read, you know. But when it came to 11 plus, then I was top of the class again. And then I always had an interest in books, but it really came about when I was living in Nevada. I lived in Nevada for about 
two and a half years. Okay, and it was this just due to circumstances? Just due to circumstances, right. okay. yeah. I was living so in a van, van. So, okay. Yeah, so then I think when you're living in a van now, you're more uh, in line with your own thoughts and who you are as a person. Well, when you go to a certain place in yeah. your life where you feel that you have nothing, yeah. Um, and obviously you have your mind, <laughs> you have your heart, you have your spirit, yeah. so that was where your communication, you communicate. You're get, yeah. I think for some reason, you're more, more get in tune with your inner self, Absolutely. because that's all there is. You know, if you're stuck in the jungle, or, or if you got, if you was in that, yeah, if you're in that, in a some remote place where there's no communication, then you start to kind of get in tune with who you are. I suppose. Your inner man. You know? Your inner man. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think sometimes as well, because we're we're constructed in the sense, so it's like you need it sometimes an extreme condition to bring yeah, out. Yeah, because it's distractions. Yeah. The TV, the radio, the phone, the thing. That's all distractions. So being in a van with no communication, sure. pretty much. That, that's that's pretty deep. Yeah, and I think you need to be sort of mentally kind of strong to get through that as well. And I think it's all kind of training. When people go to train, like boxers, they go away from everywhere else. So I suppose being in that enclosed space constantly, you know, it develops you beyond your normal level. Would you say that even many people that even go to prison in that situation, because you always find a, a lot of people when they go to uh -huh. prison or what, well, I can only speak for myself. I do know people that have spent time uh -huh. uh, in, in, inside, but they do come out very different because a lot of them all of a sudden either get into religion, get into um, mm -hmm. knowing themselves, get into some sort of subject that will take them to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is it the same principle, would you say? I think this was a bit different because, um, yeah, well, actually I got to a point when I was living there after two and a half years, I got to a point when um, I didn't have enough money to even get cheese or bread. I didn't know which one of the two to get. And then I just say, how come there's so much negativity in the world? You know, how do we fight this? I just feel that at that point on the planet, I was the only person who asked that question. That's what it felt like. And I, don't, I can't really describe what happened next, but it's like a, like a, like a bright light, you know, light, and it felt like words raining down on me. And then I just had this desire to ask, who am I? What am I? That yeah, sounds like an encounter with God, clearly. Mm -hmm. But keep going, keep going. Down. Yeah, so I was not saying, well, man, what's the man? It's got electrons. What's electrons do? You know, electrons revolve. And this is what was being downloaded? I'll just, in... I'll just, I'll just start to ask questions okay. right about why is there so much negativity? Who am I? But then when I ask the question, I ask another question on top. So I'm, a, I'm an electron or a neutron. Well, what did they do? Revolve. And I said, what's revolve? Then I realised revolve, there's two sounds. And then every time you see the word re, it means to go back, right. return, remember, renew. And I thought, one minute, I've, I've got English O level, and no teacher's ever told me this before. Sure. And then, and then I got a, oh. then I had a CD in my car. So I was just playing with the CD, I was turning the CD um, backwards, and then I put it down. So I was, I was spinning the CD back, and you can see the CD spinning back. Yeah. And then when I put the CD down, is actually moving forward. So, uh, revolve actually meant to go forward, looking back to go forward. So then I said, well, man, if we turn it the other way around, if you if you look like if you spin it forward, it's actually going back. And then I looked at the word technology, and then I, I heard the sounds in the word technology take knowledge away. So before you could go down to Brixton, but now you need a snap nav. Before you could remember numbers. Now you need a phone to remember numbers. So the actual computer is is, is actually taking away your knowledge mm -hmm. in the word. And then then I looked at the word forward, forward. Forward, yeah. A ward is a place of care. Usually in a war. So really, you shouldn't be going for the war because that means the computer is taking care. You should be going backwards, away from the ward. You know. And in if you look at the word ward, backwards, you get the word draw back. So then I realised one minute, if you change the sound around, you get the opposite meaning. So you get the word T-I-P, which is, tip. and you reverse it. Pit. So tip is the top, pit is the, is the bottom. You get the word like a bus or bust or when you bust out, which is B-U-S. You reverse the sound and you get, which is under. So I thought there's there's more to this sound than, than meets the eye, Ooh. you know. And it it just after that it was just like I was obsessed with all these words. What 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 did the words mean, you know? And then um, oh, I think the next thing that yeah I was looking at the word like um 
mill. Um, no, then I got to the word solution. That's like solution, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I said, what's the solution to this? Then I looked at the word solution backwards and you get NO, which is... So no. IT, which is... It. U is... U. And L, O, S, without the E is lose. Oh, lose, yeah. Yeah, without the E. So now I'm saying, well, what is it about these words? And there's something about the words that we haven't been taught. Sure, sure, sure. You know, and then, oh yeah, sorry, with the word re, when you reverse the word re, you've got ER. So if you've got run, and you put re in it, you've got rerun. When you reverse it, you've got runner. So when you reverse the ER, you get the, when you reverse the RE, you get the ER. So jumper, runner, mover, it carries the route forward. See, wow. But when you reverse it, it brings the route back. So I said, how come nobody's told me any of this before? So then I start to buy books on linguistics. Uh, what is you know, linguistics? Linguistics is the study of how sounds have been put together. And the father of linguistics, like the, the father who developed the theory of linguistics, mm -hmm. is called Ferdinand de Saussure. Um, and when I looked at his book, it, the first principle of linguistics it was the letting go of the letter and the study of the sound is the first step towards freedom. And that's exactly what was going through my head, that it's the sound, the key is in the sound. And then I started to realise that um, every animal makes the sound. And the sound relates to about the physical state of the person, the psychological state of the person, or the psychic state of the person. That's the reason why the sound manifests. And then stuff started to come to me like, as I said, that book, I was in foils, and something just drew me to that book. When I took the book out, it was saying the thing that was going through my head. Oh, wow. You know, so things just started to, to come to me like that. Yeah. So tell me something, even when you had your experience mm -hmm. um, in the van, um, it's very clear to me that that you are you have a sound mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? That everything is working well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But for for somebody that um, I mean, no, no. Let's just take it back to you. I mean, at some stage where you've got words bombarded. Honestly, I'm a creative person, and mm -hmm. I know that if I'm writing songs, or if mm -hmm. I'm choreographing a dance, or if I'm doing a script, whatever the mm -hmm. situation is, is that sometimes that can be quite overwhelming for me. And if I probably s spoke out what's really going on in my head, people might think that I might sound a little bit, even come across a little bit unstable, who knows? But, but tell me, do you not sometimes feel overwhelmed? Like it potentially you could even be going mad to other people listening to you when you are constantly on this word thing, constantly, constantly. Yeah, because what first happens like, I had to, I had to speak it. Yeah. When it comes to me, so the, my first friends who I saw, they was like, "What's happened to you? You swallowed a dictionary or something <laughs> like that." So there was just like amazed what was coming out yeah. of my mouth. So it's like I had to just speak this thing out, you know. And then, um, then I just started to research more. Then I really, then I looked where words come from because my curiosity. And then I realised they came from Latin, you know. And then I, I went in the same again for and I found this book about Latin. What said that most of the words in the Oxford Latin. I, when I was looking at the Latin book, something didn't make sense because you go to the word man, right? And when you find the you find the Latin word for man, but then when you go to the Latin, when you go to the Latin, it will give you a, a different definition. There was something in that didn't make sense, and I found a book that said most of the the words have been taken out of the Oxford Latin book and the Cambridge Latin book. I think that goes for many. Yeah, books, there's only yeah. two specific books that you can find them in. And I went in there and asked the, the man if he had the book. He said he never had the book. When I went in there, I found the book. It's like an 18th century Latin book. It's about that. It costs about 160 pounds. You know, and he had the security around me while I was looking at it. And he didn't want to let me put a deposit on it. But in the end, I put a deposit and I got in. That. And I was just looking at that book religiously. And that's when it, I found out that some words that we think seemed to be okay had an opposite meaning in Latin, for instance, the word male. Male means everything wicked, like malnutrition, malfunction, malign, malaria, malady. So then I'm thinking, well, why do we want to call ourselves something that means wicked? And if you look at the word male, it's got the same letters L-A-M-E, which means lame. So that's what I understood, that letters have different connotations, or they have corners that you can reverse, you know. And a key element is 
the person who constructs the What about the, the female word. while we're on this subject very quickly? <laughs> you know, <laughs> well the thing is, society has been, is, is male dominated, you know, and, and the female has been kept, uh, like this. Yeah, especially, <laughs> especially in places of scarcity, like yeah. the woman has been, because the women were in short supply and vegetation, so the woman, the woman was being kept in a in a certain place, yeah. and the male was seen as the dominant dominant force. Sure. And um, yeah, and it's um, through battle, uh, through battling with other countries in society, the woman was was at home bearing the children, right. and the woman was also. Could also be seen as a hindrance because if you had a woman and and then she produced children, you couldn't travel, you couldn't go with the army. So it's kind of filtered through to modern society. And some of the words, when you look at them, like the word marriage in Hebrew or is it Greek? I'm not sure it's Hebrew. It means ownership or the master. Husband means means to master. So the the man was put the woman as in, as as he was the master of the woman. And another reason why is because the woman was seen as valuable, because the woman was the, is the source of your population, your family. So the woman was seen as possession as mm. well in these times, especially yes. through battle, through scarcity. You know, so the woman has been in this society being put down. You know, as I said, the word marriage, ownership. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. <laughs> okay, interesting. Yeah. Um. So also. At the same time as um, you wanting to push further in regards to words um, over the years, obviously this is something that's been going on for how long? How long? It's from from birth, birth right? Birth. Well, I've, I've been always been interested well, in words. Birth, but from yeah, and I've always been attracted to books, but this incident, maybe for the last seven years, it's just taken off. You know, where I've been looking at the words and then I'm finding out every word seems to have a different meaning to what we've been taught. Then I looked at the dictionary, and that's another thing. Because the dictionary, a third of the dictionary was created by a madman, at least Oxford Dictionary. There's a madman who created the third of the words in the dictionary because the professor was trying to put the words together at the time. And he saw there was a large source coming from a particular point. And when he went to go and visit the person, he found out it was a madman. Okay, so yeah. tell me something. I mean, even that word mad, is there such a thing as a mad person? Well, you see, every word, there's sounds, you've got sounds that break down the word. So in the word dictionary, you've got the word dictate. And dictate means when you follow. Because a language was originally a creative light for the ruling classes to keep control. Right. And it, the essence is still there in the language now. To control the people. To, to control, control the, the population. People. Yeah. And designate certain jobs to certain people. So you was given a, just like tools, which, funny enough, if you turn tool the other way around, you get the word loot. But that's another story. <laughs> so basically, so, so basically, the, the language seen as a tool that, for, if you if you as a doctor, you'd be given a, a particular type of language to learn. If you as an industrial worker, you'd be given something. Yeah, and I, I'm yeah. going to interject there as well because I can honestly say, I, you know, my sister's actually a midwife, mm -hmm. and I always remember her saying to me, Maxine. Um, the languages that we are use, I mean, the language that they use. You see, I've never heard of half of it. Half of it, she just didn't understand, not even a little bit. And I remember um, actually going to her university graduation, and I felt as though I was almost in church, in a spiritual in gathering, because the 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 air was thick. You could feel something, mm -hmm. and how they. Um, I'm just saying, when you're in that arena, where you're talking about exactly what I was saying, where you've got lawyers, where you've got um, doctors, where you've yeah. got, when you're in that arena, it's, 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 it's a totally different place in regards to language. Mm -hmm. And that's why I genuinely know what you're talking about, because even being there, a lot of the things that we're saying, and, and a lot of, the, almost like rituals, mm -hmm. you know, people wearing different kinds of cloaks and holding things and whatever, there's something going on. Yeah in the spirit, through the words that they use, something was going on in that place. Mm -hmm. So I totally get you when you talk about a, a higher, um, I, I, don't, I don't even want to put it that they're, they're a, a hierarchy, but um, obviously there is different calibers of mm -hmm. jobs and different calibers of, of where, you know what I mean, in yeah. life. 
and th- yeah, because there's definitely a different language. The mouth there. is powerful and it's a level of consciousness. So if you're yeah. in power, every t- you, if you give somebody certain words to manifest, then yeah. they're going to have a certain level, level of consciousness and that could be counted to what you're trying to do. Yes. If you look at the word language, age means time, and lang- la- language means to wear somebody down. Lingo, ling- 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 when you linger, that means you take a long time to do something as well. So basically, you're given a weaker tongue to use than the people at the top. You'll find that out if you get encountered the law. You run into law, you'll find your words are no longer powerful. <laughs> no matter how long you speak for years, yeah. 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 In fact, yeah. yeah, because you was, when they start even reading your, their, your rights to you as mm-hmm. being arrested, all of a sudden, that's over your head. You don't understand what, yeah. and, and they say, do you understand what I have said? But everyone says, yes, but do they really understand what they've just said? Probably not. But I think what it is as well, people don't realize, even the people who are teaching, they don't, re- they don't realize the construct of the language. Like it's, it's a forgotten art that's been lost. So, and like if you go to the, if you go to the doctor, all of a sudden the doctor's writing a prescription, you can't understand what the prescription is or it's science now again. it's an exoskeleton you don't know unless you know what the language which is latin so a third of the english language comes from latin so you really have to understand latin to have a grasp of what the language really means it's you know what jammers we're going to take a break okay <laughs> <laughs> so you listen do not go away because there is a lot more to, 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 to grasp, to understand, to, to, to just open up your mind a little bit to really what's going on in regards to words. So do not go away as we'll be right back. We'll see you later. Hello and welcome back to Mama Blue Maxine. Now, we have been here today with Jamins, who's been educating us in regards to the word and understanding the word in its fullness. And I, you know, I'm so thankful to have you here today, seriously. Yeah, you have been incredible. And I know that, yeah, that anybody watching this program today is going to have to look at just, just life in general, because this affects us in our everyday life, in every era of our life, in regards to words, in regards to actions, in regards to uh, just, just sound codes, and it just goes on and on and on and on. Anyway, I know, Jammers, that, um, you know, we're being educated in school, mm-hmm. yeah, at this moment in time as young people, we've mm-hmm. all gone through school, or most of us anyway, for whatever reason, but, I mean, tell us even, you know, that that's our start, that's our basic that we learn, you know what I mean, from the start. I mean, tell us about that concept in regards to now you understand about words, well, how, how this really does. Well, basically, fit. words relate to your consciousness. If somebody uses a word that you, a word that you don't you don't know, then it's beyond your consciousness. Unfortunately, the schools, uh, due to the system of schools, they 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 giving you work to do roles, to perform roles, to get jobs. So it's not giving you exactly like wisdom. It's not it's enough time to question like what is truth, what is justice, communication, how to communicate, how to conduct yourself. So these essence of consciousness are being lost by. The, the specific so oh, society yeah, isn't yeah, it? of school which is getting mm. you to perform a certain role to get wow. a certain level of education and I think that's what is causing a breakdown now because communication is the key and if you can't you haven't got that level of consciousness how to use words because one word can change your whole life in a second so if you've got, I've got that, that mastery of words then you're at the mercy of somebody who has the mastery who has it yeah. And like you look at people, especially now the app phones, I said technology is taking your knowledge of how to communicate. Everybody's on their phones, everybody's got a virtual reality friend, but they have not got a real friend. Or and, what and that's why many are still very thing. lonely in this mm-hmm. lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully I'm trying to bring conscious people more aware of how to be conscious and know what words are about and be able to think on another level. You've got free to think and empower yourself. I mean, you mentioned something earlier, even in regards to the word think. You know, in regards to putting pen to paper, I remember hearing, yeah. I mean, tell us a little bit. Well, basically, they realised that the pen was more powerful than the sword. Yeah. Okay. In fact, the Bible actually tells us that, right. um, you know, mm-hmm. um, the word is more powerful than a two-edged sword. Mm-hmm. So, 
this can this sounds like it could actually link in what you're saying. Okay? Yeah, because basically, remember, this is like it was a weapon of war at first. So instead of using the sword to cut someone down, they knew they could be cut down by a word. All right, look at the word sword. Take an S from the word sword. You put it at the end. You get the word words. Let's see. And the pen is a holding device. You know, when you put pigs in the pen, it's also the penal system which relates to punishment. So basically, you could put down a code that people have to follow, and if they don't follow the code, they get sentenced by the sentence that's in the word the sentence. So inside the pen is the ink, which controls what you think. Inside the word think is the word ink. Ink line is your inclination, the habit that you do when you keep writing the same thing. Incline, inclination, and if you don't follow what's on the incline, you incur a punishment. You see, so that is the device that they've used to establish a certain pattern of behavior. You see, so it's not really free thinking because you have to work at a certain level to get the qualification that's put in the test. You see, basically, there, it, it, I mean, it sounds like that we're kind of being educated in order to do something that they would like us to do. Yeah, when I say they, yeah. we're just talking it's about the function, it's a functionality of society, society. Yes, and now exactly. society's moved away from like philosophy and thinking and arts and culture and it's now functional it's just getting jobs done and money orientated towards profit and loss so you're functioning more in relation to machines yeah. rather into how we used to function to think. And, and we're losing our consciousness by not being conscious of how because how we're because we're because we're not we're not we're not even using our our, our half of our self really no, we're not even using half of what we really have there the basics of this is before we used to look at a higher power and relate to nature and the higher power and be able to enhance ourselves through our higher power. Now we're looking at machines to, to, to produce things for us. So we're losing our natural ability, our natural gifts are being lost by this oh, technology yeah, yeah. is taking the knowledge away. It's in the word technology. You could drive before, now we're in a stat now. You can't even remember a name. Sometimes I can't remember what date is unless I look at my phone. So yes, yeah, so this is why we need to go back because Eton College uh, produce what 19 prime ministers and they're studying the arts the grammar uh, the liberal arts and the liberal arts liberal means free trivivium trivivium is what they oh. study in the high level of colleges and trivivium is the liberal arts the art of being free and the art of being free is first you have to question everything which our little ones do so if you encourage that then you have to be able to communicate you have to be able to speak and then you have to be able to see the logic in what somebody else is saying, you see. And that's the art of being free. Free. Yeah. The study of words. Jamas, is, this, is, this is just overwhelming and incredible because seriously, I mean, you know, we're, we're here today, but I've got a lot more things. <laughs> I've got a lot more questions to get <laughs> on this. You know, yeah. and for people that are watching, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just say, I just say one thing. Yeah, so remember, yeah, pen is a holding yeah. device. So when there's no pen, you get the word old pen when you can go in and out. So there's no pen in the world. Okay. Did you hear that, guys? <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> anyway, I mean, Jammers, it has been such a privilege having you here. Mm -hmm. But you know, I need to yeah inform. You know, people watching this program, you know, Janice has a book uh, which is called Etymology. That's right, Etymology. Okay. The true words, where words come from. Okay, and that, this is just basically what etymology means, yeah, yeah where the true word. words come from, yeah? yeah? Um, I mean, even if, even just looking at it, it's so broken down, the Greek, the Latin, the, it, is, it, it's, it's, it is, it's incredible, and I cannot wait to get my hands on this and read this. And as well as you have a speakers club that you have, uh, yeah. was it twice, once, yeah, like, two months? After writing the book, I said, well, you have to see if it works in action. So basically, you can make your belief a reality by, by putting it into action. That's what I've done. I didn't want to go somewhere else. So I create my own speakers club to learn how to speak. It's been running for two years now. Okay, yeah. and, how, and that's been going, it's a yeah, real it's success. It's right? one on YouTube now as well. If you put the speakers club in on YouTube. So speakers club, yeah. The, the speakers club. The speakers club. Yeah. The speakers club. Yeah. There you go, the speakers club. Because I am going to tune in and I am coming and finding out exactly what's going on because I'm oh. pretty interested in this. But Jammers, thank you so much for today. No problem, right? anytime. Absolute privilege. Keep up the good work. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do my yeah. best, thank you. <laughs> So, 
As I said, I know that you've been bombarded, fulfilled and educated today. And I'm sure that it will continue ongoing because that's what Moments with Maxine is about. So until next time, remember, you are watching Moments with Maxine. I'll see you soon.